Hey guys, Seja here. And uh, me and my wife were just going out for a walk on the land here. And um, you know, on, on our walk, we were talking about kind of one of the biggest common myths that we've seen in all of our years of traveling to different conferences and events and leading workshops and things like that. And this is the, the myth in herbalism and alternative medicine that if I use herbs, then I'm holistic, right? It's like so many people out there think of like, oh, right, I'm not using drugs or pharmaceuticals. I'm, I'm using herbs. Therefore, I'm a holistic practitioner. And it's just really not true. And I know I'm not trying to sound harsh or anything, but really when we look at, it's about mindset and that there's a way of using herbs that can be allopathic in this kind of mindset of uh, use this herb for that disease or symptom or illness or issue versus um, matching a plant to the whole person, right? That, that we're not just tunneling in on a symptom or a problem, but we're really looking at the wholeness of the person. And by wholeness, I mean not just the wholeness of their body, their whole constitution, but the psychological temperament, what's going on emotionally for that person, as well as what's going on spiritually for that person. And one of the main ways I look at kind of that spiritual side when I'm working with clients is what's life trying to teach them? What are the major lessons that they're going through that maybe they're not learning and that there's actually ways of using plants to address those life, um, kind of life um, lessons that we're trying to learn, that life's trying to teach us. And so I think one of the best examples of this that, that I've noticed is, is with adaptogens, right? Adaptogens is this big, kind of one of the biggest aspects of the alternative healthcare industry, the supplement industry, that's just really been blowing up over the last number of years. And I think this is one of those categories of herbs that is probably the most misused and misunderstood. So for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with the term adaptogen, this is a term coined by Russian scientists that basically describes a plant that has some sort of non-specific action in the body that you know raises vitality and energy and immunity and nerve function and all sorts of things like that. And the main way that they're used um, is in, in kind of the modern mindset of it is for adrenal fatigue or people that are in general just fatigued and tired all of the time. And really what, from a clinical perspective, we're seeing that that's actually a really dangerous use of adaptogens that you can actually completely destroy and wreck someone's endocrine system through misuse of adaptogens. And one of the main ways we see that happening is through this dynamic of overreaching, right? That if you're going throughout your day and you're feeling tired, it's like that's the intelligence of your body saying you need to rest, you need to sleep, like you've pushed beyond your capacity and you need to rest. But if you take, say, a bunch of ginseng or something and now you have all this energy and all this vitality, you're able to push yourself further than your body actually really wanted to go. And there ends up being this reflex kind of crash and burn response uh, after misuse of these very powerful plants. So I make this point because this is like the importance of not just basing our use of plants off of what modern science tells us, right? That all of the research and information out there on adaptogens is based on, you know, uh, in vitro studies on my, mice and isolated organs and isolated constituents in plants. And then there's these assumptions made about the whole plant acting in a whole person that's kind of this leap of logic that ultimately doesn't line up to what we see clinically. And so one of the things with that is that we have to look at tradition, right? That, that these adaptogenic remedies, what in Chinese medicine they would call a tonic herb, or what in Ayurveda they would call a rasayana, a rejuvenative tonic herb, um, that there's very specific ways of using those plants. There's very specific types of people, very specific constitutions, very specific contraindications and side effects that people can experience through misuse of those plants. And so, again, thinking of fatigue, right, everyone thinks, oh, I'm tired, therefore I have adrenal fatigue and I need adaptogens. Um, it's really dangerous to think that way. 
And I'm just using that as an example to illustrate a whole mindset that people carry into herbal practice, right? If you think like, oh, I have a urinary tract infection. Okay, take uva ursi. Oh, I have a respiratory tract infection. Okay, take OSHA. It's not specific enough, right? That these plants have very specific properties, very specific uses, and through misuse, they can actually potentially make someone's symptoms worse and make them more uncomfortable and prolong what's going on for them. So again, this I, I wanted to talk about this because I see this a lot in the herbal world, in the natural products industry, of this use this herb for that symptom mindset. And one of the things that I always strive to instill into all of my students and people that I interact with is looking at the whole person, looking at the whole plant, and how they're going to interact, not just on a molecular level, but on a constitutional level, on an energetic level, right? That the, the cold, damp respiratory infection is going to respond very well to that OSHA, but a hot, dry respiratory infection might be irritated by that OSHA, right? Thinking of fatigue, right? It's like we want to look at like ATP, right? Cellular energy, like the, the, the molecule that generates all energy at a cellular level within our body. Well, there's certain nutrients that are precursors to that, to the production of ATP. And if you're deficient in those micronutrients, you're not going to produce cellular energy. So it really doesn't have anything to do with adrenals. It has to do with nutrients, right? And nutrition. And this is why lifestyle and diet and exercise and sleep and all of those foundational principles for health are are at the at the base at the foundation of a truly vitalist practice of herbalism which is what i really always strive to teach is not not um allopathic herbalism but holistic herbalism wholeness the whole plant for the whole person which again encompasses our psychology our emotions and our spirits and the spirit of the plant too and really honoring honoring and acknowledging that part of, of our remedies as well. So I just uh, felt inspired to talk a little bit about this common myth that we see in herbalism. And I just have a question for you. Post, post a comment below. And is there any situation where you've maybe used a plant allopathically and it didn't work the way you expected it to? And why do you think that is? And did you find a plant that you ended up using that did work the way you expected it to? So I'd love to hear your feedback. Post a comment or a question below. And um, if you're not watching this on my blog, head over to evolutionaryherbalism.com. There's a bunch of free uh, videos and free training series there for you to check out. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon.